So we talked about before last week, we talked about how if I'm in the standard form of a quadratic, which is um, ax squared plus bx plus c, we talked about how um, these two are related, how b and c are related. Um, remember when we were drawing the pictures of the, of the, um, of the quadratic, you know, the box and the square that kind of looked like maybe this, right? And we had a couple lines here and like here. And we are saying this is um, X and one, 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 X and one, one, one. Remember when we were doing that, right? And we multiplied that all out. We used it as a multiplication table and multiplied that all out. And we came up with the relationship that says, um, that says um, C equals B divided by two squared. So how do I find this number here? Well, I take the middle number, I divide it by two and I square it. I take, take this number here in the middle, right? I divide it by two, that's how I get this three on each side, right? And then I square it. And that's how you get these middle numbers. Um, uh, that's how you get these uh, nine boxes here. So I take six, divide it by two, get three. Three squared is nine. It gives me those nine boxes. So that's, uh, we, that's just kind of a quick review of what we did. Um, now we're going to talk about the vertex form of quadratic. And the, oh, I can't even say it today. Of a quadratic. And this is really why we're trying to learn this C equals B divided by two relationship is because we want to put it into a square. Remember, we're drawing that square. We want to put it into a square. So, um, and, it, and it, there is a name for it. Uh, the formula, just like a linear equation, y equals mx plus b, right? There's not a name for that, but there is a name for this one. Quadratic has different forms, and they have different names for them because they're useful. The vertex form gives me the vertex of the graph, which is useful for us. Um, so this says y equals, or we'll just say f of x, equals a times x minus h. Ooh. Let's make it actually look like an H, not a B. X minus H squared plus K, where HK is the vertex. And we're going to go over that a little, this, this last pipe where HK is the vertex later when we start talking about how this relates to a graph. Right now, what we want to do is we just want to get it from the standard form into the vertex form. I just want to be able to get it into this form, and that's it, okay? So we're going to start with a picture, okay? Um, kind of like we did when we tried to find out what b divided by 2 squared was. Um, only we have three terms. Before, we only had two terms. Um, before, we only had these two terms, and... Um, and they wanted us to draw a picture. So we're going to just start with those two terms. So we're just going to start with start there. And I just want to draw a picture of that. So I know it's going to be a square because how, how do I know it's going to be a square, first of all, is it's in the name. I'm going to complete the, oops, complete the square. So I want to make a square. So I'm going to draw a picture of a square. Okay. So, um, you know, my squares kind of look funky, but we're going to pretend that it's a square, okay? So here's my square, right? And I need to have an x squared in that square, and I need to have eight x's. And since it needs to be a square, those eight x's need to be distributed so that they're even in my square. So that means I need to have an even amount on both sides of my square, and that's where I take it and I divide it by 2, right? So I'm going to take that x, that 8x and I divide it by 2. That means I'm going to have 4 on each side of my, of my square. So I'm going to draw 4 here. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I'm going to draw 4 the other way. 
One, ooh, two, three, four. So then I have, what I have a picture of here is X, one, two, three, four, and X, one, two, three, four. Is that okay? Is everyone okay with that? I'm just gonna stop there. Is, do you have any questions about how I got the picture of eight of X squared plus eight? Anybody? Or is it okay? I, I do, I don't know, I'm, like, I'm still confused. Okay, so do you see the little, um, okay, let me multiply it out and maybe you'll see the picture if I draw it in there, is that okay? So think about x times x, it gives me x squared. Are you okay with that, CLA? Yeah. So, and then I have, um, which way should I go? x times what? So think of this as a multiplication table, right? So um, if I just draw a little multiplication table, right, and I have 2 and 4 and 3 and 5, and 2 times 3 is 6, right? And 2 times 5 is 10, and 3 times 4 is 12, and 4 times 5 is 20, right? So this is what I'm doing, only I'm using x's and 1's, okay? And they're on the bottom instead of the top. They're just in different places. So this would be x times 1 gives me x, okay? And x times 1 gives me, sorry, I wrote the space is really small. And x times 1 gives me x, and x times 1 gives me x. So that gives me four x's there. Are you okay with that? Do you see that? Yeah. Okay, and same on the other, same on the... Um, so that was horizontally, same vertically, so I have to think about it. So x times 1 gives me x, and x times 1 gives me x, and x times 1 gives me x, and x times 1 gives me x. Okay, so now, I can, now can you see the x squared? So I have 1x squared and 8x's. Do you see that now? Yeah. Does that make sense a little bit better now? I can do that with any x's. Yeah. So, um, did you guys ever play with um, algebra tiles before you got here? I don't have any. I can't, sh you know, it's not like I can. I do have some. I just can't give them to you guys because you're not here. And even when you're here, I can't give them to you because how do you sanitize them this year? Really weird, right? But um, so that's kind of what it is. Those little algebra tiles, the big square is X squared. The long, thin ones are X. And that's all we're talking about is we're just kind of putting things together. I just drew my picture a little weird because... I can't draw, so I started with a big box and filled stuff in. Is that okay? So I've got eight X's here and an X squared, so I have one X squared and eight X's. And, and because I want to keep it a square, this is the, this is the tricky part, because I want to keep it a square, these eight X's here, right here, have to be evenly distributed in my square. That means I need half on one side and half on the other side, so it stays a square. If I would have put, and I, I, you guys, just so you know, I'm fine um, spending a little bit of time talking about this, okay? So if I would have drawn this square, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. If, if I, I can still put eight X's in there in a different order, right? I could have done one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, Three, I still have eight X's. Here's an X, 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 and here's an X. But now it's not a square, now it's a rectangle because they're not in there evenly. Does that make sense? So because I'm, comp I'm making a square, I want to make sure it's a square, I want these eight X's, this whatever's in the middle part here, to go in evenly. So I make a square and not a rectangle. So I'm making a square so they have to go in evenly, the same amount on each side. Does that help a little bit with how my picture has come, kind of come together? Yeah. Okay. All right, so let me erase this so it's not in the way. Okay. So, um, and also the other thing is when I, when I write out this, I have, um, right here, I have how many little ones do I have? Anybody? How many little ones there and how many little ones here? Four. Yeah, I have four on each side, right? So I have four on each side. So I could actually write this as X plus four 
times x plus 4. Or another way it can be written, because they're exactly the same, right? I'm so sorry. Is x plus 4 squared, right? Because I can write, if they're the same thing, I'm multiplying the same thing by the same thing. That's the same as saying it's squared. Now look, I have um, part of my uh, quadratic for, uh, vertex form already. It's already partway there now. Because I have, let's highlight it in this color. Because I have this part right here, right? I have the x minus h squared and x plus 4 squared. Just from, just from trying to draw a square. Okay, so I have part of my, my, um, my vertex form of the quadratic, and that's what I'm trying to get it in. Now what I need to try and get, and actually I have the A, this tells me how many x squared, how many squares I have. This A tells me how many squares I have. Well, how many squares do I have? How many x squares do I have? Well, my, um, let's see, I'm running out of, I'm highlighting too many things here. I have, um, my, my formula tells me I have how many x squares? My equation tells me how many x squares do I have? So how many x squareds do I have right here? Oh, good, Alex. Yeah, I have one. There's, one, there's no number in front of the x squared, remember? So if there's no number in front of an x, how many x's are there? There's one. Same if there's no number in front of x squared, how many is there? One. So I have one, I have one x squared. So I have one, so that's my A. And I don't have to put a one there, remember, in math, if it's one, you don't have to put it there, unless it's just by itself. So you can put it there and it won't be wrong, but it does not have to be there, okay? Questions so far, are we okay? Now for the hardest part, and this, this is really the hardest part right here, is I have to figure out where this, ne oh, sorry, don't wanna where this negative 6 comes from. And how do I get that negative 6? So now I have to find out where that negative 6 is, okay? So um, how in, in my perfect square, let's go back to my picture, how many 1s do I have? So I can multiply out now again because I have a multiplication table, right? So 1 times 1 is, oops, that's not the pin. One times one is one. One times one is one. One times one is one. One times one is one, right? All these little squares are just one times one, so they all have a one in them. How many little squares do I have? Basically, I'm looking for the area of this teeny square within my big square, right? I know one side is 4, and one side is 4, so it's 4 times 4, which is 16. So there's three or four different ways that you can kind of think about getting that 16. So um, I'm going to write this over here. So this should be um, x plus 4 squared plus 16. That's what my square is. But that's not what my equation says, right? My equation says minus 6. 
So how do I get from 16 to minus 6? How many 1s do I have to add or subtract to get from 16 to minus 6? That's the question. Because I want this equation to be true, not my square. The per minus 10. So negative 6 minus, oh, sorry, 16 minus 10 gives me negative 6. I wish I had a calculator up there. Is that right, you guys? 16 minus 10 gives me negative 6? Yes, Roberto. Nice. 16 minus 10 gives me 6. So I need to still, I'm at 6 and I need to be at negative 6. So how much more do I still have to subtract? See, Ellie, are you okay with that? That 16 minus 10 gives me positive 6, not negative 6? Yeah. Yeah. So I need to subtract some more to get to negative 6. So I got one person who has an answer. Anybody else have an answer? See, Ketlin's got his camera on, so he gets some extra credit for today. Whew. Now do some answering in the, the chat box there, Ketlin. Don't forget, you guys, if you have your cameras on, you get extra credit. Hi, Alex. Nice to see you on your upside-down camera. So in case anybody is wondering, I'm gonna, I'm, I guess I'm going to write this out a little bit. So I've got 16, right? And they said subtract 10, so that gives me 6. I still need to get to negative 6. So where am I going to go? How much more do I need to subtract? Okay. I tell you, Roberto has the answer, so I'm going to write it down here. It is negative 22, okay? So, because I'm going to subtract 22. So, I'm going to show you how this works. Remember, we multiplied stuff out, right? Um, remember, we did multiplication of polynomials. Um, last week, was it last week? No, the week before? I don't remember, and then you, re you should have reviewed it last week. Remember, x plus 4 times x plus 4, if I multiply that out, so I've got x plus 4 times x plus 4, and I distribute this out, right? And I get x squared plus 4x plus 4x plus 16 minus 22. When I, when I put all this together... I should, when I combine all my like terms, I should get this is what I want to do when I multiply whatever I decide my right formula is back out. I should get my original equation. So I've got x squared plus 8x. Okay, that one's right. And 16 minus 22 is negative 6. So this is my equation in um, the vertex form. Don't worry, we're going to do it again. Oh, so, so I'm going to say, if that, that, I'm just going to say this. Have I ever, I tr well, I'm not going to say ever, because I try not to be um, disparaging if you put in a wrong answer, right? I think wrong answers help you guys learn, right? Sometimes they help you learn more than right answers. So put in an answer. If it's wrong, it's wrong, and we'll talk about it. And we'll learn from it, okay? Just like um, when you said 10, right? Wrong answer. It was okay. It was okay that it was a wrong answer. 
It's okay to learn, put in wrong answers. Okay, so you guys um, just put in an answer and we'll, we'll talk about it. If it's right, then awesome. If it's wrong, then you know what? Awesome too, okay? Um, we'll, we'll work it out and we'll, we'll try and figure it out, okay? Is that okay for everybody who just put in that was your first answer but you didn't know? Put it in yeah. and we'll see, we'll see if it's right or wrong, okay? So be brave is what I'm saying, Okay? So let's try the next one. We're still going to do the same thing, right? What, which, um, remember, I'm only going to look at the first two terms. When I'm drawing my box, I'm only going to look at the first two terms. I'm not going to look at the one with no X. So I'm going to look at these two terms right here. And I'm going to draw a picture for these two terms. Okay? So my picture is going to be 1X. So I've got 1 x squared, so I've got one box, okay? So one box, and I want it to be a square, even though my picture does not look like a square because I cannot draw, okay? And I've got six x's, and I want to keep it a square, so how many x's on each side of my square to make sure it stays a square? So how many on each side? How many x's? Three. Yes, perfect. Three on each side. So I'm going to draw one, two, three, and one, ooh, two, three, right? So then I've got X, one, 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 X, one, 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 and then I can fill in my, um, you know, my stuff on the inside if I need X squared, X, 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 woo, X, X, X. And then I have a whole bunch of little ones because one times one is one. So that's what I've got. And then um, what, um, what number do I have here? How many little spaces? Three. three, good. And I have three on both sides, right? So this is a three. And this is a three. So I can write that as, is it okay if I just write it up here on this line since I'm running out of room? Okay. So I have X plus three. And I have two of them, right? One on each side. So that's X plus three squared. Okay. So how many little, um, how many little ones do I have? Nine. Nine. So I'm going to just write it here also. X plus three squared plus nine. Well, how many do I need here? Oh, I need nine. So guess what? Um, do I need, what do I need to add to nine to get nine? Ooh, good question, right? That's what I need to talk to myself. Nothing. Nothing. So this is my answer right here. I'm done. Because I'm not adding anything to nine to get nine. It's just X plus three squared. Done. Okay, shall we do another one with the picture? And then I'm going to do it just, and then I'm going to do one just algebraically. Is that okay? Without the picture. I know some of you guys need the picture. Some of you guys won't need the picture, but I want to do um, one more with the picture. And then I'm going to do one algebraically. Is that okay? So for those of you who don't need the pictures, um, we don't need to do the picture all the time. So the one I'm going to choose to do with the picture is the second one, the x squared plus 2x plus 10, because really um, some of the other ones have a lot of x's to draw, and my pictures aren't that good. Is that okay with you guys? So if I'm going to do this one, the, which ones am I, what terms am I looking at to draw my picture with is just the x terms, right? So it says I have one box or one, one X squared. So I'm going to draw one picture here and I have one square and how many um, X's on each side of my square? 
I, one. Yeah, one, because I have two, so there's one on each side. Awesome. Good job. And I can multiply these out, and I get x squared, and I probably should have written this on the outside. And then I've got x and x and one, right? So this gives me x plus, and I only have a one here, and a one here, so that makes that pretty easy. X plus one squared plus one, right? So that's the picture. That This is the equation for my picture. So I know I'm gonna use the X plus one squared because that is my square. And now I need to ask myself, I have one, but I need 10. So what do I do to one to get to 10? Add nine. Add nine. Perfect. Oh, I don't know why I put an equal sign there. I'm so sorry. Let me erase that one. Add nine. Beautiful. Nice job. Okay, that's it. Done. That's all you have to do. Okay. So now let's try it maybe without the picture. We'll see how it goes. Okay. So I know, um, and without the picture, I'm going to use this relationship that C equals B divided by 2 squared, okay? So I'm still going to look at these two because that's what we did to start out with our picture. We're still going to look at just those two. And I use just these two to get this part of my equation. So I'm going to use those two to get that part of my equation. Okay, so I know that this is how I kind of write it out. I'm going to do x squared plus 16x plus some number. And this is how we're going to find that number right here. See, that's, that, that's, that, that's this number right here. We're going to find this number right there, how many squares there are. And then there's a plus 24, okay? So what goes on that line? That's my question. Well, how do I find that out? I'm going to take B, which is my mid middle, can't talk, you guys, which, which is my middle number, and I'm going to divide it by 2, and then I'm going to square it, which is what I've done over here in, in all my pictures. I want to show you guys this. In all my pictures, what have I done? Well, I've taken that middle number, I've divided it by 2, and then how do I get this number here? Well, I square it. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. Um, 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. Um, four, 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 squared is 16. That's how I got all my numbers. Does that kind of make sense? Can you see that in all my pictures? So I'm just gonna, I can still do the same algebraically without a picture. I can say 16 divided by 2 is what? What's 16 divided by 2? Eight, yes. And then what's eight squared? Mm. Eight squared is what? Yes, 64. Beautiful. So this is, I'm going to write it in a different color, 64. Well, so if I want to keep my equation the same, right, I really don't want my equation to be different, if I, right, because I want it, when I multiply it all back out, I want to get this thing right here. So if I'm going to add 64 to the same side, the equal, equal sign, I have to subtract 64 outside of my parentheses. It's on the same side of the equal. There's no equal. Notice there's no equal sign. So if I add 64 and I subtract 64, what do I get? What's 64 minus 64? Zero. 
zero, right. So I'm actually, even though it looks like I'm adding 64, when I subtract 64, I'm actually adding nothing to the equation. So it doesn't change the overall value of the equation because I'm actually adding zero. That's why I'm adding 64 in one place and subtracting 64 in the other place. If there was an equal sign, I would, um, you know what the rule is with the equal sign, right? Whatever you do to one side of the equal sign, you do to the other side of the equal sign. So I would have added 64 on one side. If there was an equal sign, I would have added 64 to the other side of the equal sign. There's no equal sign. So I'm just going to do add 64 and then subtract 64. So they're on the same side of the equal sign and make a zero. Okay. So now I'm going to um, um, write my equation. And I know what this is going to turn into. I know what it's gonna turn into. We've done it over and over and over again. I know that my equation here inside this, um, inside the parenthesis, inside the parenthesis here and inside my parenthesis here, sorry, I had to find it, is this number right here is half of my x value. This was 8x, this is four. This is 6x, this is three. This is 2x, this is 1. So if this is 16x, what is this going to be? x plus what? Can you tell me what, what you think it's going to be? Do I need to sh show you again? Okay, watch. Look, watch really closely at the, at the three we've got done and see if you can see the pattern. Okay, are you ready? So here, right, right here it was 8x, and inside my parenthesis it was a 4. How are 8 and 4 related? Here it was a 6x, inside my parenthesis it was a 3. How are 6 and 3 related? Here it was a 2x, inside my parenthesis it was a 1. How are 2 and 1 related? How are they related? That's my question to you, Ketlin. Look at the picture. What did I do with that, that 8x? What did I do to it to get my x's here? On my 6x, what did I do to the x's to make sure they were even and it was a square? My 2x, what did I do to it? Huh? Sorry, I honestly didn't hear you. Not this 2x, I didn't make it into a, two, a squared. Anybody else, can you tell me what I did with the x value to make it stay in a square? Wait, what was that? So, so um, if I was to draw a picture of this, right, of this x squared, let me highlight it here. If I draw a picture of this, right, in order to keep it in square form, what would I do to that 16x? Half it by 2x. Yeah. Half it, right? I cut it in half, right? So that's what goes inside my parenthesis here, right? 4 is half of 8. 3 is half a 6. 1 is half a 2. So what goes inside my parenthesis is half of 16, which in this case is 8. And I can draw a picture of this, you guys. It's just 8 x's on each side. It's going to be really bad. So this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8, right, there we go. So I have X, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oh, there's probably another one in there somewhere. X, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right, so I have 8 here and I have 8 here. So to get this number right here algebraically, I just take this number and I cut it in half. Isn't that what I did to it right here? I took B and I divided by 2. And that what's go yeah. that's what goes there and that's squared. And then to go whatever's on the outside is whatever's left here. 24, I don't know what 24 minus 64 is. 
um, 40, is that what it is? 24 minus 64, yeah, negative 40. And that is vertex form right there. That's all there is to it. And I don't care if you draw a picture to do it. I don't care if you do it algebraically. I don't care which way you do it. We're going to do it a couple more. Do you, guys want to, do you guys want me to do one more? Let me see what's on the other page really quick, okay? Let's do this, uh, this one right here. What am I going to look at? I'm going to look at the first two numbers, right? And I'm going to say, okay. And for me, I always just rewrite it. So I give myself some, some room because I, I write big anyways. So I'm going to rewrite this as x squared plus 10x plus what all, what all my other little numbers are go in there plus 24, and I can't forget that, that's by plus 24, right? So if I'm gonna draw my picture, how many little ones are, am I gonna have in my picture? Think about it, instead of eight this time, I did 10. So instead of eight here, I did 10 on each side. So there's 10 there and there's 10 there. So how many little ones are there in here? Um, a lot. Yeah, how many is a lot? Oh, hold on. It's not 10 on both sides. What am I talking about? Why did I do that wrong? Yes, thank you. Woo. Thank you, thank you. There's not 10. There's five on both sides. Woo. There's five on this side. I don't know why it's not writing. Five on this side and five on this side. Thank you, Sally, for catching me. So how many little ones am I going to have in there? Ten. Okay, so let me go back up here. I had four on this side and four on this side. I didn't have eight little ones. I had how many little ones? Right here. Remember what am I doing? I'm doing this. I'm taking that B, I'm dividing it by two, and then I'm squaring it. Dividing it by two is five. You got that part right. But then I have to square it. So what's five squared? So what's five squared? Or five times five? What? What was that, Sally? 25? Yeah, there you go. And if I add 25, I'm going to, because it's on the same side, the equal sign, I'm going to subtract 25. Just so, just so you guys know, when, when sometimes when you talk or when you speak, you turn your speaker on and you talk at the same time, so it kind of cuts, cuts off the front part of what you say, and I only heard the five, see, Ollie. That's why I asked, asked you to say it again. So then this right here is my square, and it becomes x plus 5 squared, and then, oh, 24 minus 25. Negative 1 minus 1. Okay? Okay, I want you guys to try this one. I'm going to pause. So, uh, algebraically, right? Because I'm sorry, I'm not drawing 11. 11. 11 lines. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to look at, when I do this, I'm going to look at these first two boxes, or I mean, the, sorry, the first two terms, just the x terms, and I'm going to rewrite it. And I'm going to say this is going to be x squared plus 22x plus some number plus 10. Okay? Everyone okay so far? 
And then how do I get this number on this line right here? Well, I'm going to take 22, I'm going to divide it by 2, and I'm going to square it. So 22 divided by 2 is 11. 11 squared is 121. Is that right? 121? 11 times 11? Yeah, I think it's 121. Yeah, 121. 121. And if I add 121, I'm also going to subtract 121. Okay? All right. So then I'm going to write my um, rewrite this part of it the other way, and I can rewrite that as x plus 11 squared. Because I take that 22 to divide it by 2, right? It's 22. Okay. And then what's left is minus 1, 1, 1. Is that it? Yeah. Minus 111. That's it. Done. Okay, that's all there is to it. Okay, let's go ahead and, um, do you need a few more seconds to write that down? Are we good? Can I go to the next page? Okay, so here's two problems. I'm going to change them slightly. I'm just going to tell you guys right now. I want to change these two problems slightly, okay? I'm going to change it to this. Minus 8 and minus 24. Okay? That's all. It's just a really minute change. Okay, I want you guys to go ahead and figure them both out. Okay, so this is just a little different. The only thing, I'm still going to do exactly the same thing. Okay, guys, I'm still looking at the first two terms. And I can actually draw a picture of this, mm, kind of, right? Because it's negative 8 instead of positive 8. But I can still, I think I can still probably draw a picture of this. Um, oh, shite. So if I draw my square, I'm going to do it both algebraically and with the picture. So I'm going to kind of do it both. So I have negative 8, negative 8x. How many x's do I need on both sides of my square? 4. Negative 4, though, right? So I need negative 4 on both sides of my square. I can still draw negative 4, I guess. Right. And then... So instead of 1, this would be x, this would be negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, and negative 1. And this would be x and negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, and negative 1, right? So I would have, if I was to multiply this out, I would get x squared, negative x, negative x, negative x, and negative x. Whew. Okay, I'm going to write this one sideways, sorry. Negative x, negative x negative x and negative x, right? So there's my negative eight, right? And then negative one times negative one is what? Okay, yet yeah, Siri, thank you, honey. Um, the video will be up later today, I hope. Okay, and then there's a Delta math assignment. So negative one times negative one is positive one. So all of these, instead of being negative, will be positive, right? Because a negative times a negative is a positive. So if I was to write this out, what number does this represent now? What number do these represent? Negative four. Negative four. Good. So those numbers represent negative four. So this time this would be, um, um, where do I want to write this at? I'll write it down here. This would be x minus 4 squared. So really, the only difference between, um, between it being plus 8 and negative 8 is a minus sign, right? So if this number here is positive, 
this number this sign will be positive if this number is negative this sign will be negative and that's what I, that's the only thing i wanted to change is really that's the only difference with this okay is if this sign here is negative then my parenthesis my whatever's in my parenthesis will be negative if this sign is positive whatever's inside my parenthesis will be positive does that make sense because that's how these ones be ones will be. If it's a positive for all these ones are positive here. If it's a negative, all these ones are negative, and it would be negative. Does it kind of make sense? So now if we do this algebraically, we're gonna finish this out algebraically if that's okay. I'm gonna rewrite this, right, as x squared minus 8x plus some number plus seven. So how do I get what goes on that line? Well, I do, right, negative 8 divided by 2 squared. Well, negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4, which we already know. And negative 4 times negative 4 is positive, oops, let's change the color, positive 16. And if I'm going to add 16, I'm also going to subtract 16. And notice, I just want to kind of say this. Notice where I'm subtracting 16 at. I'm not subtracting 16 from anywhere, anything inside the parenthesis. I'm subtracting 16 from whatever's on the outside of the parenthesis. Okay, so I'm being very meticulous about where I place my subtracts. Is that okay? Does that make sense to everyone? So notice I've done it the same place every single time. Okay, so then this becomes... Um, this becomes x minus 4, because this is a minus, x minus 4 squared, because this is a minus, and then 7 minus 16. Negative 9, is that what it is? I think that's negative 9. And that's it. Beautiful. Okay, and then I, can you guys try, um, can I give you like um, four minutes to try uh, the next one? I'm going to just leave that one here so you'll have the picture and you'll have the um, algebraic way to do it so you can see it. Okay, so I'm going to just go ahead and do it. Oh, do you want me to pause a little bit longer? No, you can continue. Okay. So you think you got half of it figured out, Siale? Nice job. Half of it's better yeah. than none, right? So I'm going to do it algebraically, right? So I'm going to look at which two. Um, I'm going to look at the first two here. There. And I'm going to rewrite it. So I'm going to rewrite it as x squared minus 24x plus some number minus 16. So how do I find out what that number is? Well, I'm going to take negative 24 and I'm going to divide it by 2 because that's what I do to find how many x's are on each side of my square, right? I divide it by 2. And then to find out how many 1's there is, I square it. So 24 divided by 2 is 12. And 12 squared is um, 144. If I add 144, I'm going to subtract 144. So to rewrite this little portion would be x minus, because remember I take 24, I have how many are on each side of my square? Well, 12, and they're not positive 12, they're negative 12, so that would be 12 squared. And then this is going to be minus, oh my Oh my lanta. Zero, carry the one, six, 260. Oh no, sorry, not 260, 160. One sixty. Questions? Sally, did you get the x minus 12 squared part? No, that's the part I stopped. Oh, okay. Does it make sense how I got it? Do you have a question on how I got it? 
Oh, how did I get no, 144? I, I, I okay, how did I get 144? Good question, Roberto. So remember, um, we've defined that C equals B divided by two squared. And remember this is, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna write this out. This is AX squared plus BX plus C. So how do I get C, right, right here C, is I take B, I divide it by two and I square it, okay? So that means I'm gonna take negative 24, I'm gonna divide it by two and I'm gonna square it. So that's negative 12, squared, which is 144. Did that help a little bit? Okay, and you do that every single time. To get the number that goes on this line right here, I take this middle number, divide it by two and square it every single time. Any other questions? Okay. So...